Welcome to the Connecticut Case Law Podcast. Dan Lage here with you on this very special episode. Special because, uh, well, it's not really an episode at all. Uh, this is more like a, uh, like, a, like a tutorial for you, our new law clerk. Welcome aboard. Each and every week, myself, Rich Rockland, Ryan McKean, we aim to deliver high quality content to our listener base. And our listener base is an audience of professionals, lawyers primarily, who rely on us to provide for them the latest in our respective practice areas. And so rather than you know, do it the old way, which is to you know, crack open a legal book or you know, read very small black and white font on a computer screen of some very dense and difficult legal language, they tune in to us. They put a headphone in their ear and they drive or, or do their dishes or whatever it is that they do and simultaneously get that professional development that you know, they all seek. And in fact, in our state, it's required, but hopefully in a way that's a bit entertaining, but certainly more appealing than having to read it themselves. And I'd like for you to hold on to that thought as I continue through this video with you. Better than having to read it for themselves. And that's where you come in. You see, you have a skill set that is extremely valuable. You are equipped with this ability to read a very dense legal opinion and condense it into something that's much more digestible. You do it all the time. You read a case for class and whether it's because you don't want to get bad grades or if it's you know more selfishly, you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of the other students. You do that almost every single night. And we'd like for you to use that skill set with us, but dumb it down just a little bit. So while we do deliver a very professional, high quality piece of content to our audience every week, we do it in a way that's very casual. And the only way that we can manage that is if our law clerk provides to us a brief, a memo, whatever you want to call it a finished product that I don't have to read more than once, that I can just pick up, have the microphone in front of me and go. And if I don't get a product that allows me to do that, I might as well just read it for myself, right? So with that in mind, this is a Zoom call. Might as well share my screen and let you see um, a particular case that we did earlier this year that I, I liked. I, I think this was a very well done brief by our prior law clerk. And this opinion was Figueroa versus Commissioner of Correction, as you hopefully see on the screen here. This is about 14 pages long. And if you want a rough guideline as to what I expect, I think at the minimum, five pages. If you're doing less than five pages, you're not doing your job. If I see a brief that's five pages or less, uh, I'm wondering what exactly it was that you were reading. Conversely, if I see an opinion that's over 20 pages, it's probably too much. And so very rarely will you see something that's five pages or less or 20 pages or more. And in fact, you'll probably see 20 pages or more more often than you see five pages or less. Some opinions are really long and some, opi some long opinions have nothing but very important issues in them. So Figueroa here, was a longer opinion. It had a very dense factual record. And it came out to 14 pages in the brief. 14 pages for me equals about a half hour of content. I aim to give my listeners about an hour of content each week that I put out an episode. And so if that's typically three cases, I'd say one out of the three cases is probably really important. And the other two are not so important. And to break that down, that important case, I'm expecting to do maybe 30 minutes on it and about 15 minutes each on the lesser uh, important cases. So Figueroa here has the structure that we all know and love and that I you know, expect every single week. This structure should be familiar to you. It's familiar to our, to our audience because that's what keeps them coming back. We give them an audio format the same structure that they're used to reading with their own eyes. We start with the facts and procedural history. We go on to claim one. We do the arguments of the parties. 
the standard of review, any additional facts necessary for that claim, and then the holding of the court. It's what you do in law school every single time. It's the IRAC method, um, but here for the podcast and dumbed down. So uh, what I suggest, in fact, what I, I think you should do, I, I think it's a little stronger than a suggestion, a little short of a command, but is to read every single case of the week twice. The first time, read it through very quickly without doing anything else, just skim right through it. That's gonna give you an idea of what the case is about. And that's what our first paragraph, the introduction paragraph is for. When I take the cases that you write for me every single week, what I'd like to do is give our listeners a preview of what's coming up in the episode. So I'll say, on this week's podcast, we have three cases. The first case has to do with the sufficiency of the evidence in a burglary conviction. Our second case this week is a double jeopardy claim raised when we have a risk of injury to a minor and an assault in the first degree. And then finally this week, we're going all the way up to the Supreme Court for a public policy argument on the death penalty here in Connecticut. I can only do that if, because remember, I only want to read these three things one time. I can only do that for my listeners if my law clerk wrote an introduction that perfectly captured the theme of the case. Okay, so this one does a good job. It's about two issues really, and the third one is a combination of the two. But that's what I expect in the introduction. The facts come up next. The facts should be very dense because this is the unique part of every case, right? You know, me, Ryan, and Rich, we know the law. You can sort of afford to gloss over certain things in the standard of review, let's say, or even in the arguments of the parties. But when it comes to the facts, this is where I'd like to see it all right here. Uh, the only other thing that I think I need to cover is when you get to the holding, this is the analysis of the court. It's important stuff, but uh, you know, you don't need every single detail. I certainly want to see some important cases. So as you scroll down here in the holding, our previous law clerk made sure that she cited the Parham case here. Uh, and then she actually put in a footnote, which I thought was pretty cool, um, that the factors that the court employed. This is important stuff. Our listeners want to know that. But, you know, this is only about a page and a half that she spent on the holding. And, and the true holding in Figueroa spans several pages. But this was a good condensation of the issues. The final thing that I want to let you know about is that, you know, when you read law school opinions, you know they've been edited down by the author of the book, the editor of the book. They leave out the nonsense that isn't important for the particular issue or concept that you're learning in class. We like for you to do the same thing. Now, this is a skill that you need to develop as you develop a relationship with us to so start to develop that skill in saying, oh, you know what? The court here didn't reach the issue of X. Well, if they didn't reach the issue of X, I don't care about X and neither do my listeners. They don't care. They just want to deal with whatever the primary subject matter on appeal was. Um, you'll start to develop that skill of you know, being able to spot those lesser important uh, subjects on appeal that while they weren't wholly discarded by the appellate court, they didn't get into it with, in, in much substance because it wasn't very material or finally, it might be a topic that really wasn't the whole point of the appeal. It was just some sort of you know, sub issue that the lawyers needed to fill space. And so if you start to detect that over time, you'll begin to you know, realize that ability of not including unimportant stuff. And so maybe you know, you'll do it early on and you'll notice if you listen to the podcast, I won't even get to a page that you, you know, you'd be like, Dan, I, I spent time on that, I wrote that, and I'm gonna tell you what well, you shouldn't have because it wasn't important to me or our listeners. So remember, um, you know, if you need anything, reach out to me, Daniel at RuaneAttorneys.com or any of the other lawyers here, and we'll be happy to walk you through uh, you know, what it is that we expect and you know, help you get to the point where you can deliver us a product and we don't even have to think about it. We can just pick it up, read it, and move on. That's the whole point. So good luck to you as you uh, embark on this journey with us. We're happy to have you aboard. I'm going to stop 
sharing, and I'm also going to stop recording. See ya.